Okay, well, here we are at Loch Ness Shores in daylight at this time. And uh, they really are lovely facilities here. Uh, look, really nice little shop in there. Uh, some glamping pods up on the hill. Great uh, thing and very cheery stuff. <laughs> See you. <clears throat> and now we're going to walk up the river and see see whether we can walk to the village and whether anything's happening there on Boxing Day. You know, other than the fact that the light's a bit sort of dull and grey, there's a lot to be said for Scotland at this time of year. Very few people, no midges, very peaceful. Um, yeah, if you could fix the, if you could add a bit of sunshine, a bit more sunshine maybe, but that would mean moving it further south and then it wouldn't be Scotland. So you take what you, you, you take what you're given, I guess. And uh, even if you only do it for a limited number of hours of daylight, it's very pretty. Are you having fun? This is the path of sorts. You little obstacles. Quite a lot of little obstacles actually. Over or under? Hmm. I think over. Very peaty coloured water. Danger of falling masonry keep clear, it says. Maybe the end of our walk along this way. Okay, Tilly, come back this way. Come on, girl. Tilly, come. It's clearly a mile today in your books. This is the way I think, walk ye in it. This is quite a serious tree. I'm not well up on my conifers, but this looks like a redwood of some sort to me. Sequoia, I don't know. In any case, it's quite substantial. Come on, girl. Right, down there, there are waterfalls but I don't see any kind of open path on this side. The map's not very clear. So I think if we want to see those, we need to work our way around. This might be a bit of a trek and down the other side. But at the moment, it's a nice day for a walk. Let's go see what we can find. Aha, I think we may have found what we're looking for. That way. A bit puffed after walking up here. That looks rather good. Be a nice spot to stay if you wanted to do something other than a small camper van in midwinter. Right, however, the walk goes this way. Ah, now here's a good view. 
should be. There. That's the Foyers River. You can see it flowing out into Loch Ness there. And uh, just to the left of where it flows into the loch is where I took that photo last night. Not sure if this is a path. And if there's nothing to see, I may regret my descent. However, clearly there's a very nice little platform here. People have been here before me. Now don't go too close to the edge, Timmy's. Uh, uh, uh. Even I won't go too close to the edge here. River Foyer. And up there somewhere are the falls. Can't quite see them yet. It's not the upper falls anyway. Well I'm getting my exercise this morning. I wonder if the village is big enough to have anywhere where I might get a coffee or even lunch. If not, it doesn't matter because back in the van I have bread, toaster and purchased in the little shop in the campsite some venison pate. Venison seemed appropriate somehow. Well, there's a small fault till you don't go too close to the edge. Uh, 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 uh. Come here, come here, good girl. I don't know how steep it is down there, but there are some falls anyway, um, but that's small. And I think that's a little detour because it's clear that this river does not come down that fall. Um, so, uh, so let's go and see around the corner, see if we can see any more. It's actually rather lovely down there. The uh, very peaty soil which you can see in the colour of the water or I can see in the colour of the water uh, a rich brown which no doubt flavours the whisky in very fascinating ways a bench there's often a bench there for a reason I mean other than just sitting on of course and there you go that I think is upper foyer falls and it looks as if you can get right up to it let's go and see how close we can get You know, I came out this morning making sure I had my gloves, wishing I could find my woolly hat. And after this little climb, it's gone very mild. Notice I don't have gloves on. And uh, okay, I've got a thick shirt, but I have just stopped and removed the jersey I was wearing. It's actually quite pleasant here. Certainly climbing this in warmer weather would be a little exhausting. At least, I suppose in warmer weather, well, it's not exhausting for some people. In warmer weather, I wouldn't be doing it with a thick coat on. And uh, this drop, presumably, is part of what that power station is down by the lake. I presume that's hydroelectric and I presume, well, I don't know if it's coming from here or if there's a pipeline somewhere else. But I know there is a weir at the top here, so it could be hydroelectric from this river. And if so, 
given that I think they're pulling, I think they said 600 megawatts on the side, it makes you realise how big this river would be if they weren't diverting part of it through the power station. But I don't know, the, the power station may be feeding from, uh, from somewhere higher up anyway. So here are the upper falls and uh, very good they are too. Quite a pool down there and you may be able to see down below there's a little promontory we'll go down and have a look from there as well. You like the fall? There you go, so I'm now recording video and I can choose later which direction I want to point to. You know, is it filming there? You can do that thing where you look around, yeah. is that we got to the top of the hill and there's a wonderful cafe here, the Waterfall Cafe and uh, it's very cozy. And they have some lovely biscuits and things as well so I may well stop in here tomorrow as we head out uh, to get some provisions for the journey. Well, it's funny what you can find in unexpected places, but the little waterfall cafe there was astonishingly good. I had a really yummy breakfast roll with everything in it, including haggis and some wonderful bacon. And then I had their sort of apple crumble cake, which was warm and, um, uh, and sort of a bit bread and butter pudding-y with cream on top. I mean, it was, it was just superb. So uh, I would very happily come back there again if I uh, ever in this area. And I recommend that if you are, you do too. It's well worth it and waterfalls just over the road to go and see. <clears throat> well, these are fun. It's like we've stumbled on a little bit of Switzerland here. I don't think they have any monsters in Swiss lakes, probably. Maybe they do, but they probably tidied them up a long time ago. So Loch Ness is, I think, the second largest lake in Scotland after Loch Lomond, but it's quite deep. Uh, it's one of the deepest lakes. I was reading about this yesterday. And uh, because of that, its volume, the volume of water that it holds, is more than all the lakes in England and Wales put together, which is quite something. There we go. Down there is the campsite. You can see where it is in relation to the loch. You might even be able to see it's probably just a tiny blue dot on this camera, but the little van down there. Well, we made it down the hill, which wasn't hard given the amount of extra weight I put on at lunchtime. Some beautiful trees here, really standing out against the dark pines behind and Foyers Bay here is uh, I think there's a pier down here I think this is probably in the grounds of the power station and so uh, maybe it's well we'll see what it looks like so here we are at Foyers Pier 
the campsite is over there, hidden behind the trees. Um, you, we are, we had lunch up the hill there somewhere. There's a power station over there, but we also passed the power station back there. So maybe there's old and new uh, hydroelectric, I think, power uh, coming down here. So this, of course, is Loch Ness, and uh, just a little, few miles beyond the end of it, there is Inverness. Um, Inver, I think, means you know the mouth, the estuary, the mouth of a river. In the same way as you might have Portsmouth down south, you have Inver area or Inverness here. Um, and the sun is going down, but it's very nice to see it. Look how calm and still and empty it is at this time of year. Very nice. Well, I just walked along and spoke to the guy at the gate in his little hut. I think I might have been the first person he'd seen all day. And uh, it was intriguing, very nice guy. Um, but I started to ask him questions about the power station and he knew absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's like, how can you work at the gate? I mean, his job is probably just to check the passes of people who come in. Um, but, you know, I was asking him, this is a new power station, is that the old one down there or is that still running? He said, oh, I think that's just the workshops down there. And I said, well, it sounded like there were some turbines humming or something as I came by. He said, oh, maybe some of them work there. So I was then asking him, um, you know, if it's fed from the Foyers River or from somewhere else, and he didn't know. We'd never actually been into the power station. It's kind of amazing. Anyway, nice chap. But his job is to sit there watching videos on his iPhone until somebody comes along and he decides whether to let them in or not. I guess that's... Uh, Maybe that's a good job for some people. So yes, this is clearly an older part of the power station. And the outflow here, these streams that are coming out make wonderful loop noises from time to time. Um, and there's a sign around the corner which says hydroelectric power station in very small letters. Because otherwise there's nothing really to indicate what this is. But it does say that the water flow and water level might increase suddenly at any time, presumably if demand peaks. But I do wonder, I'd love to know what's inside, what's still running there. I'll have to have a look and see if I can find some stuff out online. I tell you what, they knew how to make these buildings look good whenever this one was built. It's got kind of gables and castellations and things up here. And there's a very slight sound of humming turbines, which was much louder around the back. But at least this side of it blends in with the environment. Now you see this says Foyer's factory building. So perhaps there are old turbines that aren't really in use now, but there's still something humming in there. and. Uh, this may, the water may just flow through it now and the main power generation may be further down the way. And if we come down to the lock again, a little bit further on from the pier here, you can see the new power station over there. Doesn't quite have the same aesthetic appeal, does it? I mean, it's tidy, it could be a lot worse, I grant you, but uh, they clearly took some pride in the architecture of their industrial buildings back when that old one was built. Right, somewhere here, there's a route back to the Camp Tilly. Let's see if we can find it. Maybe this way. Somewhere we must actually cross that outflow, which is an interesting challenge. So here you go, there is actually a nice bridge across the outflow here. So water's moving pretty fast, actually. There's quite a lot of it flowing through here. So I hope they're generating a reasonable amount of power from it. But uh, 
clearly that must be where it's all really happening and there's almost no evidence which means I guess that the outflow if, if there are pipes going down into that and flowing out into the lock they must be coming out well underwater rather than on the surface like this but this makes for quite a pretty stream Now we're about to engage in an ancient Highland ritual here of dishwashing in the dark. Now traditionally this would be done wearing only a kilt and you would have a bucket and you would have to break the ice on the bucket before you could wash the dishes. Um, nowadays the Scots have got soft and we have light, we have hot water and uh, we're even allowed to wear a coat while we do it. 